Welcome, everyone, to the premiere episode of Beyond the Riverwalk. My name is Kevin Barron, and we're happy that you joined us for a what I think will be a unique look at San Antonio throughout the series of this show. This first episode, we've got a very special guest with us. Justice Ken Wise is a sitting judge here in Texas and a fellow podcaster, so we've got something in common right away. He hosts a show called Wise About Texas, and it's one of my favorite podcasts. It's on my list for Texas podcasts, but it's also one that I look forward to every episode coming out on. He talks about the history of Texas from a lot of different vantage points, uh, some of the intrigue, some of the, the myth and story, uh, as well as some of the history that is really you know beyond fascinating to me as a, a new resident of the state. Uh, we've been here, as you may know, for a little over a year, so we've learned a little bit, but I'm learning a whole lot more through Justice Wise. So thank you, Judge, for, for joining us today. I'm really looking forward to our conversation. Well, thanks, Kevin. It's a special honor to be with you on your premiere episode, and I'm excited to start listening to this podcast about one of my favorite cities. All right. Well, thank you very much. Well, I guess to kind of get us rolling, one of my first questions, and you know, when we started to uh, to look into moving here, was what's the history of the city? How did it get founded? What makes it similar to other cities that maybe have longstanding histories? So let's start, I guess, with what's the history of San Antonio, and maybe how is it different than other cities in Texas? Well, the the settlement of what became San Antonio was explored, the area was explored in the late 1600s, early 1700s by the Spanish. Um, those explorers named the San Antonio River. They named San Pedro Qu- Creek. Um, a presidio was built in the early 1700s, I think about 1718. Um, and then the earliest settlers of San Antonio, as we think about it today, are generally discussed as being uh, the Canary Islander group that came in 1731. A group of people from the Canary Islands settled here. Uh, they built a, a church, which still stands on the main plaza, San Fernando Cathedral, and the city just grew from there. And and by the late 1700s, there were at least 2,000 people, which, you know, for the time was uh, an incredible population. That That is very unique in Texas because the history of Texas is fairly recent. You know, it's Texas is less than 200 years old. And to have a city, we really only have one city that's uh, of a substantial age, and that's San Antonio. So the history is, is obviously longstanding, and it's unique in the way it was developed. Uh, and it started basically what you're saying was around a couple thousand people, which, like you said, is is a pretty good size. Uh, it's grown. I think it's. I, try, I should know my statistics, but I guess it's maybe the fifth, sixth, maybe largest city in in the country now. It's supposed to be growing quite a bit larger than that in the next ten years or so. Uh, but the culture here uh, is different than any place else. What else uh, fed into, I guess, what the culture of this city is? What are the kind of the main um, if you want to put them into classifications, kind of the main groups of people that influenced what San Antonio is today? Well, one of the largest groups, I would say, uh, was the Germans. Between 1850 and 1860, uh, that sort of time period, a, a little bit earlier than that, too, the, there was massive German immigration into Texas, and they would land in Galveston or a port that's no longer there called Indianola, and they Uh, migrated basically right through San Antonio, New Braunfels, up to Fredericksburg, which was supposed to be just a waypoint as they went up to a colony near what's present-day Llano. Uh, But Fredericksburg turned into kind of the center of of that um, uh, settlement. But uh, so many of them, the Germans, settled in San Antonio. And uh, in fact, in the 1800s, uh, there were more Germ- there was more german spoken than either spanish or english in san antonio and they continue to leave a mark on the city so there was a huge uh, german influence then you had the the miscellaneous anglo uh, settlement from east to west and then of course from south to north you had the hispanic culture and all those cultures everyone in true texas fashion has managed to pass their traditions across cultural boundaries. And that just creates such a rich mix uh, in the society of a community where you have those traditions that mix together. And uh, every every group is justifiably proud of their own traditions, but they don't necessarily keep them to themselves. And I think that that's, that uh, makes Texas such a unique uh, and culturally rich environment. And San Antonio really is the center of that. 
Yeah, that's very true. I mean, we moved here, and one of the first things uh, you learn, I guess, I decided uh, in my office I was going to bring donuts. <laughs> and people looked at me like, you know, why are you bringing donuts? You should be bringing, you know, breakfast tacos or bringing kolaches <laughs> or something. And I was like, well, that's wait right. a minute. You're going to have to fill me in on this a little bit <laughs> to understand the history and why it's so ingrained into people. But it's also, like you said, it, it's pretty diverse. So the, you have all these different influences that I've seen in the last year or so that come together and they're pretty harmonious. I mean, you really don't see what I would call is maybe to use a different word of factionalization of the community. It's uh, there is a, there's kind of a, a calm and a friendliness to this city that is something that I haven't really observed elsewhere. You know, I grew up in New Orleans uh, many, many years ago, uh, and that city is, you know, is a little bit different. There's a little bit of tension there. There always has been, but it's also got a long and unique kind of history to it. Um, what what do you think makes San Antonio different in that it does have that long history, that long group of, of influences from not only different parts of the country, but different parts of the world, yet it's it's a really friendly, kind of open and welcoming city because being new uh, to the community, it seems like everyone is happy that you are. They're glad you're here. Uh, and that's that's a different experience that we've had living in uh, different parts of the country. Well, I think you're you're definitely right about that, and I think it's not just San Antonio. I think it's the whole state is that way. The cities in te- within Texas are different from each other if you want to focus on that, um, but all of them tend to be fairly friendly. And it's interesting about San Antonio because I think being an older city, uh, it has some very established traditions, but yet at the same time, that doesn't the, – the San Antonio society is not – closed to anyone really. And and that goes for any city in Texas. And I, I personally think one of the reasons is just the way the state was settled and the way the state developed, you know, it was settled. It was in, it was the northernmost province of new Spain. And then of course, Mexico after the Mexican revolution, uh, it was very hard to colonize back in the old, old, old days, the way you would you would uh, secure your territory is to populate it. And it was just very hard to do that in Texas because of the Indians and the rugged climate and the terrain and all of that. Um, And so the people that did eventually settle it uh, from the United States, they were, they had to be incredibly resilient um, and they faced incredible hardship, but they managed to make it work. And that sort of spirit, that, that spirit, uh, continues to the present day. And I think you can go through the various phases of Texas history right up to 2017, and you'll see a state that rewards hard work, provides opportunity. If you're smart and you're going to work hard and you've got a good idea and a good work ethic, you have the opportunity to succeed. And and Texas wins the you know best state to do business and, and has done so for dozens of years in a row, it seems. And and that's that spirit of Texas. And I think that it, it's, it's a spirit that says we're all in this together. We're all trying to do the same thing. We all want the same thing. We may be different, but that just makes us more interesting. And uh, one of the reasons I'm doing Wise About Texas is to kind of preserve that spirit and make sure people are aware of that because it, it really has um, makes it a more fun place to live. That's for sure. I grew up, I'm 47 years old, grew up and knew that my grandmother on my dad's side uh, was from Texas. My dad was born in Texas. He was born in Dripping Springs. I grew up in New Orleans. And so pretty much most of my family uh, still lives in New Orleans around the Louisiana, uh, the southeastern Louisiana area. And what I found prior to moving here and learned was that my grandmother on my dad's side grew up in Fredericksburg and lived in San Antonio. And San Antonio is where my grandfather and my grandmother on my dad's side actually met each other. Uh, My grandfather was in the Army during World War II, uh, was here at Fort Sam. Uh, They lived here after that, uh, moved to outside of Austin, uh, and then eventually made their way back to New Orleans. And that was something I had no idea. So I've really enjoyed the last year just getting know, to know some roots uh, of what, the, you know, what the state's about, how it kind of influenced them. Uh, and especially, I guess, from my, from my dad's perspective, understanding uh, his affinity for the state. Because even though he's never lived here, at least, I guess, since he was a child, uh, this is where he, you know, he feels the most home. Uh, so it's definitely a unique state. And I think San Antonio is something that we've enjoyed 
um, just being able to go and explore and find out that, wait, we've got more connections to this place than we realized. Um, and I guess one of the things that, that really strikes me as interesting is that San Antonio and New Orleans seem very interesting um, in that they're, they're similar to each other. Uh, at least in, in my perspective. And I wanted to see if, if you could elaborate a little bit on that, because we've talked about it when we, we got together initially uh, to chat about doing this show. And I think it's an it's an interesting observation. And I've shared it with everybody I've talked to since you and I talked initially <laughs> uh, about why that may be. Well, I think they're very similar, number one, because they're very old. And number two, because of what I'd mentioned earlier, there were there were large um, ethnic groups that came together uh, and molded or melded, excuse me, pretty well. Um, you know, too often in, in modern pop culture, so to speak, when people talk about diversity, they're really talking about division, you know, that everybody's got to kind of keep to themselves and do their own thing. Well, that's really not where you find the strength in diversity. You find the strength when you're all coming together for a common goal and whether that goal is to work hard and build a city or whether the goal is to, you know, have a party, whatever the goal is, if you're working together, uh, you're going to get the best of everyone. And I think that new Orleans certainly shows that, um, where the cultural traditions are maintained and adopted by everyone and, uh, as just traditions. And I think San Antonio has a lot of that and, and primarily because of age, uh, because it is such an old city. The other city and there there was actually I was looking up something and there's there's uh, and I didn't do much research into this term but it, San Antonio was referred to as one of the four quote unique cities close quote in the United States the other three being New Orleans Boston and San Francisco and so I thought that was pretty interesting um that it would be one of those four because you have such a mix of culture um and I think that that probably results and you and you have a lot of old traditions you know in san antonio it's fiesta in new orleans it's mardi gras but it's the same thing you know it's a community-wide event where everyone participates and everyone's interest and in, in traditions and etc are celebrated in one large community event and it creates that sense of community uh that you find in cities like new orleans or or San Antonio. Um, the other city in Texas that was headed that direction was Galveston. And, uh, um, if you listen to wise about Texas, you'll hear about the 1900 storm that wiped, yeah. wiped out Galveston and it really changed that. But Galveston is a lot like that also. Can you tell us a little bit about downtown and how the history of the city has maybe, uh, been shaped by what happened there? Because a lot of well, it is still there. Sure. When the town was laid out, it was laid out in a very traditional fashion with that main plaza being the center. Actually, the church, San Fernando Cathedral, uh, was where they started. And they stood literally at the door of the church and started measuring and laying out the town, the plaza, around the, the church. Then it was just a parish. Now it's a cathedral. And um, the if you look from the air, uh, the main plaza is shaped like a cross. And that's really where the center of the society was the Alamo was built a little later, uh, at what was then out of town, you know, it was across the river. And so, um, it was set apart from the town. That's hard to imagine now as big a city as it is, you know, you can walk from the plaza to the Alamo in minutes, but you know, back then it would have been out of town. And, um, so that's really where it, it all, all the activities, everything occurred on the main plaza. And that's a very traditional Spanish thing. And you see lots of towns in Texas. Um, Texas has kind of adopted that architecture. The, the idea of a courthouse square really comes from that uh, sort of layout. And so the city just grew out from there. And, uh, and of course, now that it's a, a huge national city, you have all this, all these historic structures right in the middle of a booming downtown. I think that's one thing that really gives San Antonio that feel that's hard to describe is you'll be walking past a skyscraper and then you'll come upon a 1700s church. I mean, it's just, it's a neat thing to see. I guess the preservation of all of that, apart from just the history and significance, is also people value the roots. They value the history of the city and they value um, you know, what has been, what's come before us. Uh, and I see that, you know, you see it in a lot of big cities where there are these big preservation efforts, but it seems like more, 
I don't know if it's true or not, but in my perception, it seems like more of an effort. Whereas here, it's just it's a natural thing to do, it seems. Uh, and I'm sure there's work that goes into it, but it just seems like everybody values their history uh, and wants it preserved, but also wants to integrate it into the future, just like you said. Right, uh, and I think, you know, of course, the Alamo, I mean, that was a game changer because that that, that battle was so critically important uh, to Texas history that um, – you know, so much of the Texas history happened right there because uh, then the town was called Behar. And, um, you know, it was the really the only community of any size. And it was on the road uh, where one of only two roads in Texas at the time. And the Alamo had become, the missions were all secularized in the late 1700s. And the Alamo had become a a military installation. And so, of course, if you're going to have a revolution, <laughs> you're going to go after the military uh, of the enemy. So they had to go fight at the Alamo. And the Alamo was the center of conflict a few times before the actual battle of the Alamo that we all know. But, you know, once that battle occurred, uh, that place was almost instantly a shrine. Well, that I didn't know. I didn't realize that that had been a, the focus of, I guess, of a lot of tension and, and before that, because it seemed like, you know, not knowing, I guess, the detailed history, it seems like that is that's the main focus, that one period of time. But there was more than that. So what happened there before? Why was that such a significant thing? Because of that crossroads? Location? Well, yeah. And the Alamo was one of the several missions that are in San Antonio. And uh, the military occupied it after the mission was secularized. They could have occupied others. They just chose the Alamo. And so probably because it was closer to town. But um, it was a mission for many, many years. And then it was uh, that military installation. Then we had the battle. Then it was used for other things. And there's actually, you were talking about historic preservation. There's actually a huge effort underway right now. Uh, partnership with the city of San Antonio, the state of Texas, General Land Office, and others. Um, and I believe it's called Reimagine the Alamo, and they're trying to do something to kind of enhance the the uh, historic preservation around the Alamo because the city has grown in so, so close that it's very crowded and hard to get around sometimes. So I think I'm excited about that project. I think it's going to be really interesting to see what happens. Well, since you mentioned that, that the restoration effort, I, one of the things that I noticed in seeing that, you know, in the media and all this, it looks like they're trying to essentially restore the footprint of what the Alamo was because there's a lot of development around there now. You know, there are buildings that have been built up over the years. Um, there's, you know, the roads that are there. There's the uh, the, the, uh, the memorials that are there. Uh, what do you think about that? Is that something that uh, – that people will understand? Because I think it, the first thing comes to my mind is, okay, well, you, there's a lot of history there beyond the Alamo, yet we may be taking some of that away to go back to what the Alamo was. How do you how do you reconcile those things, or what are your thoughts on that? Well, that's a tough problem, <laughs> and yeah. that's, the, that's the issue that's going to consume a lot of time. I, I happen to have been in San Antonio when they had the first pub, public meeting on this project, so I oh, stuck okay. around and went to it and listened yeah. to – this firm that they've that they've engaged who specializes in these kind of projects and reinterpreting and and restoring historic sites. So I think there's a lot of decisions that are going to have to be made. Um, you know, as a as a pure kind of uh, historian, I I always like to see things as they were. You know, I sit around and imagine what it must have been like and what it looked like in 1836. Well, the truth of the matter is in 1836, I mean, it was huge. And that area, the, if you were to rebuild the walls, you'd be building walls on private property. You can't realistically do that. And right. so you've got to kind of try to figure out how much of the restoration to how it actually looked do you want to do versus – um, the opportunity for event space or, or more museum space or some of the other uh, things that, that you have an opportunity to do. Uh, the state of Texas has bought a couple of the buildings that are across the street from the Alamo, but even those buildings, uh, you know, they have their own history. I mean, that, that too is part of the history of the city. And so uh, it's a delicate dance, uh, but I'd, but I think the overarching goal is great, which is to create a larger, um, broader interpretation of that area. Because you're right, it is more there, – there's no question that what makes the Alamo famous worldwide is the March 6, 1836 battle. You cannot 
argue with that. And that's, that's why it's important to Texas. I mean, we're, you know, we're in Texas and it's important to Texas for that reason, but there were a lot of other things, uh, uh, in the Alamo and around the Alamo. And so, uh, you know, you need to tell the story of it as a mission, for example. Um, so I think it's a, it's a real opportunity to create uh, a better cultural gym in the city center of the city. It's already great. I think it's, I yeah. love going there, but it's going to be even better. Um, we've been, yeah, we, in the time we've lived here, I, we've probably been three or four times. And one of the, the keepsakes that I've got, and it, it may be kind of a touristy thing, but I've got one of the flags, the Texas flags that flew over the Alamo on no, January 1st. Great, yeah, that's and, great. And it's just something to me, it's like, you know, it's, it's really, I don't know, it makes you feel part of, you know, part of some of that history by just understanding the significance of it and uh, and taking something home, you know, that that is, um, that's actually been there. That's been part of its history because it will be there, I'm assuming and hoping for, you know, for many, many years. Yeah. It's a special place. Well, some of the other parts of the city, some of the other history of the city is probably a little bit lesser known. And one of the things we talked about the other day when we first chatted uh, was the history of this treaty uh, that was signed between the Indians at the time and I guess... I guess it was the Spanish. Oh, uh, you're talking about uh, the the peace ceremony yes, in the main yes. plaza. Yeah, that's such a great story. I, and it's not one that you hear a lot, but it was the 1700s. And I believe uh, I should have looked it up and written it down before. I think it was 1745. But one of the problems that they had back then was the it was not the Comanches. It was the Apaches that were attacking San Antonio just almost constantly to the point where people wouldn't even get out of their houses. They were so scared. And uh, finally, they got together with the Apaches and made a peace treaty. Well, the way that they cemented that treaty was that they dug a big hole right in the main plaza. And they had a peace ceremony. So the Apaches put their war clubs and their hatchets and their arrows into this big hole. And they also placed a very much alive white horse into this hole. Wow. Then there was some ceremonial dancing between the Spanish leaders and the Apache leaders, after which everyone participated in filling that hole in. And of course, sadly, burying the horse alive, but that was an important part of that ceremony. And so, uh, you know, they very literally buried the hatchet and, um, that struck a peace accord. And that was right in the middle of the main plaza. And I think there's, there's, um, some commemorative paver bricks throughout that plaza that talk about different things that happened there. And I know that I've seen this brick uh, talks about that treaty, but that, that happened. So I guess if you're going to dig down into the main plaza, you'd find that horse's skeleton at some point and all those hatchets. But that was, you know, 1745. So that I thought that was a pretty interesting story. It really is. And the fact that it's still there is, you know, to me is amazing because you are talking about main plaza where the cathedral is. So, I mean, that, right. you know, I would imagine it will be there forever because of the, the restoration or the, excuse me, the uh, preservation of the area. But that was really, that's a great story. And it's something I've shared since we talked again with people that I know, people I've worked with, and they've lived here all their lives. They had no idea. Never heard of that before. <laughs> so there's just some great stuff that happened in the city. What else comes to mind when you think about San Antonio that makes it unique in your mind or some of those you know interesting stories that you could share with us? I think one of the things that, that uh, San Antonio is famous for within Texas is the enormous military presence. You know, there's four or five Air Force bases, four, I think. Uh, there's a huge army post, Fort Sam Houston, and the military has just been a critical part of the San Antonio community for so long. There's the Brook Army Medical Center there. Um, I think I, this used to be the case. I think it's still the case that every enlisted Air Force recruit goes through basic training there at Lackland Air Force Base. Yeah. And so that's always been very important. Um, one couple of famous military figures that that had some stories in San Antonio. Robert E. Lee was there when he was a United States Army officer. Um, and there's one story that he rode his horse into the lobby of the Minger Hotel. Really? Uh, which, I, which I think is awesome and I have always wanted to do, but I, <laughs> I have not been able to talk them into letting me do that. Uh, but oh, wow. the, Minger, uh, the Minger Hotel, of course, right by the Alamo, has yeah. what's, what they call the old lobby. And that was the lobby where uh, Robert E. Lee rode his horse. And then... Um, Teddy Roosevelt also recruited his Rough Riders 
uh, in the bar of the Minger Hotel, and there's a display in there, of course, that discusses all that. So I always like to stop by that bar. And, I was to say, I've not been there. in it yet, but I've heard that story, and I wondered if that was true. So that actually took place there. Because that we took also, place at the hotel, yeah. Yeah, and I've heard also that they they did basically some training in one of the local parks or – I guess to prepare. I think so, yeah, and and I'm not sure which park that was, yeah. but yeah, he did train his rough riders. The Minger, uh, the Minger is just one of those great old t- hotels. I I love those, and yeah. um, it's got so much history and so much furniture in there is original, and it's just a beautiful spot. They had um, Captain Richard King, who was uh, the largest rancher uh, probably in the world for a long time, had the King Ranch in South Texas, which still exists. Mm -hmm. And uh, he died in the Minger Hotel in a room on the second floor. And they say his ghost is there. And I've I've looked, but I hadn't seen him yet. I hope to see him. (laughs) Uh, That is something. So there's all kinds of stories about that. What's the history of the military here? Is it because of its location, you know, with, I guess, with respect to Mexico, that it it really was... Uh, continued to be that after the the Texas Revolution, or, or why is it such a big military town in the first place? Well, I think a- after the Texas Revolution, uh, San Antonio was on the western frontier of the new Republic of Texas, and so that made it a place that needed to be defended, and it already had defenses. You know, it had the Alamo there, and so uh, it was one of the places that you could establish. Um, a defense for the frontier, a headquarters from which to operate. And uh, Texas went on later to build a ch- what's called the chain of forts. Um, but San Antonio was part of that. Uh, so that was part of that military tradition. And I think just the fact that it had been established for so long um, that, you know, those things just tend to grow up around there. Uh, I'm not sure why the Air Force chose to build so much around there, but um, probably because they had plenty of room south and west to fly those yeah. airplanes around, which I still enjoy watching yeah. when I go to town. <laughs> well, I didn't, yeah, I didn't realize, you know, we were been exploring the city, and when we first moved here, we were driving, I guess it was down 151 uh, toward the city, and we're headed downtown, and one of those big transport planes went over, and it, it looked like you could, you know, I don't, you can recognize the pilot. It seemed like it was so low, uh, yeah. but it was just amazing to see. And I had realized, I didn't realize that it was right there in the middle of town. You know, essentially, uh, the city has grown so much, but it really is interesting to see. And I work with some folks that are in the reserves and that kind of thing. And uh, it does. It just seems like part of the culture of the city that has also just been blended over the years. San Antonio is a very popular place uh, for veterans and to retire because of all the great medical care. And if in you know, there are tons of people that uh, former military that that choose to retire in San Antonio, and that just keeps that culture going. And uh, is just another version of all the immigration that has been attracted to that place. For people that are new to the city, which is who we're trying to focus our show on, uh, where do you where do you suggest people go to visit? I mean, is it the known tourist areas? Once you get beyond that, uh, what are some interesting places that you would suggest? Because I know on your show, at the end of the show, every episode you tell people how to get to the places that you talked about. Are there any highlights uh, for San Antonio that you'd want to share with people? Oh, yeah. I I think um, one place I would go, of course, you're going to go downtown, you're going to go to the Alamo, you're going to go to the main plaza. I I would go to uh, Mission Concepcion, which is just south of downtown on the Mission Road. Uh, Very pivotal battle in Texas history um, called the Battle of Concepcion, appropriately. Uh, 90 guys against 200 of the best Mexican infantry, and they whipped them, the Texans whipped them pretty soundly. And that really gave the Texas Army a lot of confidence and and I would argue overconfidence about their prospects for success in a revolution. Um, and that's an interesting place. The mission itself is very old. Some of the original frescoes are still visible on the walls, which makes it a, a very interesting attraction. Um, another place I, that I just love to go in San Antonio is the King William District just to drive around and look at the houses that um, built in the late 1800s and and just gorgeous mansions in that area. There's a, there was a gentleman named Ginther, Carl Ginther, who in the 1850s, he came from Fredericksburg to San Antonio and set up a flour mill, uh, which is now Pioneer Flour Mills. And his home has been turned into 
a tourist attraction and you can tour the house and you, there's a restaurant there. And, uh, that's a place that I really enjoy going. That's close to the King, King William district. Now, is King uh, William predominantly that German, uh, the German immigrants that came here? Is that yes, what? They, I think uh, the story is that the King William district was named for King Wilhelm, okay. the, the something uh, from Germany. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, and, and those houses are just, it's one of my favorite places in the whole state. Okay. Well, any place else can you think of off the top of your head? Um, well, there's some great parks in San Antonio, you know, Brackenridge Park, which is where the zoo's located. Mm -hmm. The Witte Museum is there, which is very interesting. Yeah, we like um, that. Brackenridge Park is great. That was donated to the city by a guy named George Brackenridge and a uh, very famous Texan. And uh, that's a beautiful natural area. What's so interesting about all these places is how close they are to downtown. You know, it's all right. kind of right there. Right. Um, my most recent episode of Wise About Texas involved the story of Pearl Brewing, brewing and uh, some intrigue associated with the owners of that. And so the Pearl Brewery has now been converted to a hotel called the Hotel Emma. And uh, there's a big commercial uh, retail restaurant uh, development around that brewery also very close to downtown and that's a i've been there and it's a lot of fun um there's some great museums in the city i think that one of the more unique ones to me is the buckhorn museum which is also right downtown yeah and um so there's a ton of places you probably have, you'd have to uh, you have to take some weekends like we've been doing i guess schedule some things out and just start start driving start visiting start learning you know what's what's unique and different about this city and what makes it a, a great place to live well i really appreciate you spending the time with us today i know it's a it's a weekend we're recording this uh, and you've had a busy week, probably like a lot of folks, but we appreciate you taking the time and for doing all the work that you do with Wise About Texas. Uh, it's something, uh, like I said, I look forward to and I would definitely recommend to other people. Are there other, uh, I guess, resources out there or anything, uh, websites or places to read more about San Antonio that you could recommend? Well, there's uh, the city of San Antonio does a pretty good job uh, on their website and um you know, the Handbook of Texas Online, which is a project of the Texas State Historical Association, uh, people submit articles uh, to the Handbook of Texas that talk about uh, little pieces of history of everywhere in Texas. And just about anything that you're interested in in San Antonio, there's going to be something in the Handbook of Texas Online. Uh, so I would, I would start there uh, probably would be the best place. Well, it, you reminded me of a comment that you made um recently, it might have been when we talked the other day, uh, was that when you talk about the history of Texas, one way or another, you may end up in San Antonio or somehow related to this city. That's for sure. Yeah. So that is, that's a great thing, I guess, to end on is that one way or another, Texas and San Antonio are, are uh, more intertwined, regardless of what part of the state you're talking about, than probably most people realize. Well, thank you so much for being part of the show and for being on our first episode. Um, I'm getting the rust off of my wheels here after not doing a podcaster for a while. So thank you for being a <laughs> guinea pig for that as well. <laughs> well, it's been my pleasure. I enjoyed the conversation and good luck with the podcast. I'm sure it's going to be a big hit. Well, thank you very much. And we'll definitely link to those episodes we mentioned that you mentioned in the show. Uh, we'll link to your social media stuff as well as to your website. Uh, and we'll let you know when the podcast posts. So thank you again, and we'll look forward to hopefully maybe we can do this again one day in the future. If there's a new topic or something specific that people want to hear about, and you've got the time, we'd definitely appreciate that as well. well. I'd enjoy that very much. Well, thanks so much, and thank you, everyone, for listening to this episode. If you've got ideas for show notes or uh, for show uh, topics, interview guests, please give us a holler. You can reach us easily at Facebook or on Twitter. You can also reach us at, or reach me, I should say, at Kevin at beyondriverwalk.com. And the website is obviously beyondriverwalk.com. So, again, thanks for joining us, and we'll talk to you all soon. Mm -hmm.